discomfort is kind of like it's almost like a swear word <laughs> it's like it's okay for a few days like i'm good with that but after a while i'm kind of like man i can't can't quite see how people can do this day after day after day and kind of know what every day is going to bring them you know there's there's just nothing interesting or exciting that comes from being comfortable all the time welcome to the go hunt life show hosted by todd nevins This is Todd Nevins, and I explore stories about people that had seemingly normal lives and careers going, but they pulled the ripcord and blew up their comfort bubbles to hunt down their life that they had always dreamed of living. On the show today, I talked to Pat Schulte, founder of Bum Fuzzle. Pat and his wife, Allie, pulled the ripcord on the normal life 15 years ago. Back then, Pat was a stocks and commodities trader in Chicago, working the trading pits, and they were really just living a normal urban life in downtown Chicago. But something changed. Their friends started to move in the direction of house and suburbs and kids and yard and commute, and they just weren't ready for that. So instead, this raised in the Midwest couple came up with the idea to buy a sailboat and sail the world. The problem was that neither one of them had ever stepped foot on a sailboat. They took Sailing 101 on Lake Michigan and launched to sail around the world. From that point, 15 years have gone by and they have traveled by land and by sea all over the world and along the way added two kids to the journey. This family of four is still moving and Pat He's still a stocks and commodities trader. He's figured out how to continue his profession and make money from literally anywhere in the world. And the kicker to all of this is that they don't even own a cell phone. Thanks to Cordell McNarlin for introducing me to Pat's story. And my conversation with Pat Schulte of Bumfuzzle is coming up next. But first, a word from our sponsor, PrintDirtCheap.com. They have sponsored the Go Hunt Life podcast for over a year. Founder Jeff Chrisman, thank you very much. If you need anything printed, printed swag, done cheap and fast, go to PrintDirtCheap.com. So business cards, letterhead, event tickets, like club flyers, menus, anything printed, uh, go to PrintDirtCheap.com. If you don't believe me, Go to their site, and there are 602 five-star reviews on there that explains exactly how good they are. If you don't believe 602 people, order their free sample pack. Click on that on the homepage, and they'll send you a few samples of exactly what they do and how good it is. Once you go back, use promo code LIFEHUNTER for $10 off. And if you want to know the story behind the company, I actually interviewed Jeff uh, back in July of 2017 on episode number 57. Check it out. And again, printed swag. Use promo code LIFEHUNTER for $10 off. Pat, thank you for jumping on the show today. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Where are you located in the world? And if you were to walk outside, describe what you would see. Uh, Well, for the last year or so, I've been, uh, I would have seen turquoise water and a beach uh, from the deck of my boat. But At the moment, I'm helping my mom with some things at her house up in Portland, Oregon. So if I walk outside right now, I'll see a dog park across the street and (laughs) pretty typical uh, inner city neighbor, well, city neighborhood. Yeah, Portland's not a bad city, but yeah, it it, uh, a little different than turquoise waters for sure. How old are you? Are you married and do you have kids? Uh, Yeah, I'm 44 and uh, married for, geez, about 100 years. (laughs) <laughs> and I have two kids, an uh, eight-year-old girl, a six-year-old boy. Eight and six. And your wife's name is Allie? That's right. Yep. All right. So what is your profession and primary ways that you make money? Uh, yeah, I'm a trader. I've been uh, trading stocks, trading commodities uh, pretty much ever since I graduated college. Um, so I started out in the, in the trading pits in Minneapolis, moved to the trading pits in Chicago, and then eventually uh, took off, but uh, now I trade online from from anywhere. Yeah, we're going to go back 15 years now because you've been you had a more traditional situation in life. You guys were in Chicago, and then you pulled the ripcord 15 years ago, which is certainly a lot further than my typical guests. And you've been doing this from boats, from cars, trucks on the road across all kinds of continents, like. But take me back to your life back then. Where were you guys living right before you launched out? And what was a, a typical week? Um, yeah, well, we lived 
uh, downtown Chicago. We were like three blocks from the Sears Tower. Um, you know, walk to work, walk home, uh, walk to the, you know, just walk around downtown Chicago, grab dinner, walk home together. It was pretty, pretty normal. Wise. Pretty normal, very normal, yeah. Sunday paper in bed, you know, and uh, Saturday nights at the at the bar. <laughs> All right, yeah. So, I mean, completely, completely normal. Um, what was leading up to, it was just the two of you, you were married? Yeah, yeah, we were married. We've been together since high school, so um, I joke about the 100 years thing, but it's very much uh, the majority of our lives together, yeah. Okay, so you're making money in downtown Chicago. You're living a normal downtown life, making money, all that kind of good stuff. When did the thought of doing something completely and totally different start? Well, we were in Chicago, I don't know, about three years, two, three years. And friends we'd made there started to, you know, everybody kind of lived downtown um, for the most part. Most of our friends, um, you know, were right, right around work. Everybody kind of lives down there, takes the train in or whatever. But then uh, gradually people started to move out to the burbs, started to have the kids. Um, and we just, uh, I don't know, for some reason, we just weren't ready for that yet. Um, despite having been uh, together so long and married so young that, you know, it was kind of expected of us. But we just, we knew that's what we wanted at some point, but not yet, you know. And, um, and so then it be, kind of became a choice, like, uh, are we going to, follow that path, the expected path, or should we just do something completely different? And you guys did something 100% different. What, what we're leading up to is that you guys got on a sailboat and started sailing around the world, but this was way before YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, like all of these examples that you can learn from and then make, you know, make that launch a little bit easier. What was the motivating factor in that to do something like that? Yeah, it's it's really completely crazy to me now to think that it was only you know 15 years ago that there was just nothing out there. There was no, you know, it was books. <laughs> That's it. So I mean, I, I was off. I was off work at 1:30. I'd come home. I was home a few hours before Allie, and uh, I eventually discovered. Um, I mean, remember it was like a backpacking blog type site where kind of any backpackers could post little blurbs, I guess. I don't even know if these things exist anymore. <laughs> but I, I remember finding that, you know, and I was pro I was about 27, I guess, I guess at the time. And I was reading about these stories, all these like 18 year olds and, uh, you know, 20 year olds, and they were off in, you know, just crazy places, Vietnam or, uh, or, you know, and they're just having these like, crazy, amazing, fun adventures. And I'm kind of sitting there thinking, "Jeez, oh, man, that sounds pretty great. Like, why, why don't I do something like that? And uh, why don't we do something like that?" And so that's kind of where the, the original germ of an idea began. And then I, I did find a couple of small, you know, very beginner blogs from back then uh, that talked about cruising and sailing the Caribbean and that sort of thing. And I thought, "Why, well, that sounds pretty great." So it just kind of built from that. It sounds great. And I've had multiple guests on the show that are, that are doing this, but sounding great and the reality of it, are, there is a way, there's a huge divide and there's a lot of work that goes into it. Did you have sailing experience before you started? No, no, we'd never, before we actually came up with the idea, we'd never been on a, on a sailboat. Um, we eventually ended up taking Sailing 101 out there on Lake Michigan, uh, but you know, that was like on a little tiny 20 foot boat or whatever. And it was basically, it was like, Oh, that's how a sail works. Like, you know, up to that point, I thought it was like a big parachute that just kind of caught the wind and you blew you around, you know, once I realized, <laughs> once I realized it's more like, you know, more like an airplane wing, then I was kind of like, Oh, okay. That makes sense now. So uh, that, I think we're good. We should just get, get moving then. <laughs> that d doesn't sound like you were ready. <laughs> well, it seemed ready enough to me, I guess. I figured. <laughs> I don't know. Where'd you buy the boat and where did you launch from? Uh, we bought the boat in Fort Lauderdale. Um, <laughs> again, very not typical way. I mean, we flew down there. Um, it was like 4th of July. I remember very well. It was 4th of July weekend. We were planning to spend like four or five days over the, over the, you know, over the holiday and see a bunch of boats and 
and we got down to Florida and it was stinking hot, you know, typical July weather. <laughs> I remember we went and saw like 10 boats that day, found the boat that, that we liked and we're like, okay, we'll take this one. And so we just bought it that day. And I remember got back to the hotel that night. I called the airlines and said, uh, can we get back to Chicago tonight? <laughs> and so we just, I tailed it back to Chicago where it was uh, much cooler. What were your friends and family telling you, though? Uh, I, remember, I don't know. I remember my dad specifically. The first thing out of his mouth when I told him what we were going to do, he said, don't you like your job? You know, very, very clearly he was of the mindset that, you know, if you like your job, you just stay with it and you stay the course. Um and that's what you do. You pragmatic. Know? That's very pragmatic. Yeah. I mean, he knew I had a, I had, had a great job. I was doing well for myself. Like, why would I just, it didn't make any sense in their minds, like why we would simply walk away from that. What were you walking away from though? You, you've continued to trade while traveling. So you had to quit your jobs. How much money did you have to get started? And how were you going to pay for this after the savings ran out? Fortunately, my business, uh, I was a, I was a trader and I've traded for myself. Um, you know, I started literally a few, just a few years earlier by selling, um, my pickup truck for five and putting $5,000 into a trading account. And, and I've never made another deposit since, but that's maybe not typical, but it was the way it was for us. The thing was at the time in my business, there's, there's always that risk, you know, every single day. I carry these huge positions into work and I could, you know, it was always at risk. I mean, there was always that chance. I thought I managed my risk well, but you know, it was still, still a possibility uh, that you lose that money, you know? So we lived very simply. Allie was a secretary at a law firm. Um, we were able to live basically just off of her salary. Um, even downtown Chicago with the condo, you know, right there. Um, so, I mean, financially for us, it was, we were fortunate that we were able, once the, once we made the decision to just close out my account and walk away, it wasn't like, um, a business or uh, that I had to, <laughs> I don't know, you know, I had to, it wasn't like a big process. It was just kind of when I, in my business, that was a constant competition in the trading pits, um, between me and the other traders I stood around all day. And so I wasn't even able to tell single one of them about my plans. Um, day by day, I would roll, start rolling out of my, my trading positions and nobody knew, knew until the day we left. And I said, Hey guys, I'm taking off, uh, sail around the world and I won't be back on Monday. And <laughs> that was it. Did you have any income? I mean, what I'm getting at is that I've talked to a lot of people that were right at that moment. And typically their, their rip cord out is a combination of savings and some consistent income that won't stop even if they launch out and go somewhere else or they're able to do consulting or whatever. Like, was this just all in savings or, or you had investments that were con con going to continue to come in regardless of whether you were on top of them or not? Yeah, it was pretty much uh, purely savings for us. Yeah. Um, we sold our condo, you know, a lot of people tend to rent their properties, uh, whatever. We just sold ours. I didn't want that headache. Um, and yeah, for us, it was just savings and investing it and uh, living off of that until, you know, I basically for 10 years before we, you know, before I started actively trading, really actively trading again and, uh, and then branching out and doing the mentoring and stuff that I do now. Okay, so you you fly back to Fort Lauderdale, you get on the boat. What what was it like sailing out of the harbor for the first time on your own and uh, with nothing but water ahead of you? Yeah, it's fantastic, really. I mean, I, the most the scariest part to me was probably just backing out of the slip, you know, because I I knew I was guaranteed to like bump into the to the uh, the dock, you know. <laughs> and, and we did, and we scraped up the boat a couple times, and then it was like, okay, whatever, that's out of the way. And uh, but once you get away from land, that's when the fun really starts. You know, you get out to sea, and there's nothing there. You know, and we were lucky; we were in Fort Lauderdale, so it was just you know pretty quick pop over to the Bahamas. And then we spent spent a few months in the Bahamas, and just I mean, the water's shallow, and the bottom is sand, and there's a 
million islands you tuck behind and it's just fantastic place to learn to sail and so you were you were on that boat for how many years is it four yeah just about four years yeah all right and you give me bring me up to speed on the last 15 years including selling that boat you've you've gone from water to land to water to land and i mean back and forth give me a recap of like all of your modes of transportation we sailed around the world. We, once we got back to Fort Lauderdale, that was it. We were done sailing, done with boats. Um, so we sold that and drove away in a rental car. And literally, we were still in Florida um, at a hotel and got online and found a VW bus for sale in Seattle and bought it. And then uh, that was kind of the start of the next trip. Uh, but. First, we did a race in our 65 Porsche, coast to coast. We had some fun with that. Um, then we jumped in the VW bus and went to Mexico for a while, went to Alaska, went all the way down to Argentina, shipped that off to Europe, um, drove around Europe, and then sold the VW bus in, in Europe after about two years of living in it. Um, now we were pregnant, so we... Uh, Flew back to the States, said hi to the family, um, jumped in our, uh, we've got a 65 Porsche that's been in my family for my entire life. So um, we jumped in that car and we drove that down to Mexico and with really no plan, but Allie was about six, seven months pregnant at this time. Just drove on down there to look for a place to have a baby, um, ended, up, <laughs> ended up in Puerto Vallarta and uh Boy, I don't know. We spent some time there. Then eventually, we, when our daughter was about six months, we bought a, a monohull sailboat back up in uh, California and uh, eventually sailed that a few months later down to Mexico. And we spent about, I don't know, two or three years um, uh, just cruising Mexico and had our baby boy there. And, uh, and then uh, eventually we sold that boat. And we bought a 66 Dodge Travco motorhome. Um, I'm into the old vintage stuff. Yeah, you <laughs> are. <laughs> so we bought this old vintage motorhome, and we drove that around and lived in that for about two years throughout Mexico and throughout uh, the United States. Um, switched that up, bought an Airstream, lived in that one for about a year. And then, uh, and then about a year ago, we bought the, our latest boat, which is a 42-foot Grand Banks trawler. And uh, we just spent the last, uh, what, six, nine months uh, cruising from Florida over to the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos and then back to Florida right now for hurricane season. Support for this podcast and the following message comes from Click Placement, a digital agency designing Google AdWords and pay-per-click marketing strategies for startups, small businesses, and even people building a side hustle. Hit up clickplacement.com to start a conversation. If you would like to personally support the Go Hunt Life podcast, go to patreon.com forward slash go hunt life to make a donation. So your family has doubled since you started on this journey. So your original your original why was just just involved the two of you. And as I talk to people and I explain stories over the last two years of doing this podcast, and I talk to people that may have kids and a family, they're like, yeah, that sounds great if you're just a married couple without kids, but forget it with a family. You're continuing to prove that not to be the case. How did, how did your why evolve and change as you started adding two kids into the mix? quite understood why i mean we got that a lot you know well that's the end of that yeah you know? yeah like, exactly like, you got a kid on the way you're all done now and it's kind of like well i don't see i never understood really you know why can't kids come along and why can't they you know just be a part of you and you're with them all the time it's great um so for us yeah it's uh it's evolved but it's i would say evolve for the better change for the better you know we get to show our kids uh show them a bit of the world um and for us, it's just been fun. You know, after, at that point, it had been about, I don't know, six or seven years of travel for us, probably 65 countries. And, and we were kind of like, I wouldn't say jaded, but, you know, sort of jaded. And it was kind of like, you know, you would go to a new place and might not be as exciting to us as it should have been almost. Um, but once kids come along, you start to, everything is like, you've seen through 
you know, fresh eyes, you know, and everything becomes more fun and exciting again. And um, that's the way it's been for us. What's the biggest challenge? I mean, you're, you're dealing with, you know, healthcare and all different, I mean, people fall and break arms and, and uh, I mean, just schooling and all of the things that are involved in raising children. What is the biggest challenge? What's been the biggest challenges along the way? Um, yeah, I mean, sort of the same um, challenges as with any kid, I suppose, or kids um, in a family. You know, you worry about health care. For us, it's health care is a big issue because we don't spend a lot of time in the States. So the idea of paying um, a fortune for health care here doesn't do us any bit, bit of good. So anytime we do visit family, we're like nervous that something's going to happen. So instead, we kind of prefer to stay down in Mexico and these other countries where we can get medical, medical care at a decent uh, price. Besides that, though, there's, you know, there's uh, obviously education and uh, we're the homeschool, unschool variety, um, you know, and so we teach our kids. We, we explore things together. When there's something interesting, we, we discuss it and learn about it. And, that, you know, there's those things. Um, oh, probably the biggest issue with having kids is that you have to feed them. <laughs> When it was just Allie and I, we might spend, uh, you know, we we like, well, we still got a 12 pack of beer and a bag of chips, so we're okay on this beach for another three days, you know. <laughs> you can't do that with kids, you know. They they need to eat and uh, eat well. So, what are you gonna do? When you go back, not just you, but now your kids as well, because they've experienced life in a very untraditionally compared to a normal a normal family in the United States. When you go back and you stay with family or friends and you see the house and the yard and the fence and, and the normal stuff that they have, like, what, how does that feel to you when you go and stay with people like that? That's a loaded question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to plead the fifth. I was saying I feel comfortable. And to me, uh, comfort is kind of like, it's almost like a swear word. <laughs> it's like, it's okay for a few days. Like. I'm good with that, but after a while, I'm kind of like, man, I can't, can't quite see how people can do this day after day after day, and kind of know what every day is going to bring them. You know, there's there's just nothing interesting or exciting that comes from being comfortable all the time, and um, so that's I don't know. I guess I try to avoid being comfortable all the time, as evidenced probably by our. Uh, what we choose to travel in. <laughs> of course. What about the kids when they're playing in the yards with the other kids and all that kind of stuff? Like, what are they, what do they think of that life versus the one that they're living? Yeah, they have fun. Um, you know, they have fun when they're playing with other kids and running around these parks. But again, you know, it, it all gets to be kind of the same, same and they start to miss the boat. I mean, they've grown up around water. So for us, like being in the ocean daily is, you know, that's something that we all love and uh, miss when we're not when we're away from it. Uh, you know, and just I don't know. They enjoy they enjoy the travel as much as we do. They've never known. You know, I, I hate to say that they just never known that normal normal sort of life. So they're not especially drawn to it as you might as maybe. Uh, maybe a kid, if you took them away from a uh, normal suburban life at eight and said, okay, now we're going to go, you know, sailing and say goodbye to all these people and uh, you will, you won't see them very often. You know, that's, they don't, they don't have to deal with that, I guess. Jump back over to, to the money aspect of it. I mean, have you, has you, the fact, how have you made, how has the way that you've made money evolved and changed over the last 15 years as tools have caught up as technology has caught up online trading like all of that has that evolved and changed for you yeah i mean well for me trading is trading um you know it's all the same it's all the same tools um but it's it's gone from for me being in a trading pit and yelling and, and screaming all day long to sitting in front of a computer screen and uh, quiet and but um, but now I'm able to do it from anywhere, you know, um, it's, it's been pretty amazing change over the past 10 years or so where the things that I might've had to pay, uh, pretty exorbitant amounts for back then for, for news, uh, for charting, uh, for things like that. Um, those things 
uh, are free now. I mean, yes. basically all, I mean, everybody says it, but all I need is a, is a Wi-Fi connection and I'm, you know, I can work. It's, it's pretty amazing. I mean, we spent the past six months in the Bahamas and I mean, sometimes, you know, I was just shocked by how good the internet was. I mean, just out in the middle of, of nowhere, you know, there was no town around, there was nothing, but yet here I was sitting at Anchorage, um, just surrounded by nothing but a beautiful island and fantastic water and for days and could just trade and then go for a swim. Are you hot spotting off of your phone or, or tying into a Wi-Fi that's on land? Uh, I don't even own a phone. For, <laughs> we haven't owned a phone since we left 15 years ago. It's kind of our uh, one thing that we're just determined not to do. You don't own a cell phone? No. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know. They're making it harder and harder these days, but we're still able to do it. So then, okay, back to the boat on the you know, going for a swim. Where's the Wi-Fi coming from? From land, from somewhere? So yeah, so we do have an iPad with uh, with cellular, and uh, you just buy a SIM card from uh, from Patelco when you're in the Bahamas, or Telcel when you're in Mexico, and you plug it in, and off you go. You know, you got your internet. I mean, the Bahamas it was uh, about thirty bucks for fifteen gigabytes. Um, you know, it's very very reasonable, very good price, and and really good service. So. Uh, it's amazing how far things have come. When we were in the Bahamas uh, 14 years ago, I remember calling our niece, and it was a, a dollar a minute using a uh, using a card in a in a phone booth. You know, <laughs> right. so it shocked me that they could have come so far in such a short time, and and it made this all possible for this for this lifestyle, really. And you've also created a company called appropriately Wander Financial. What is Wander Financial? Uh, the Wanderer Financial. The is Wanderer a, Financial. Okay. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a financial newsletter um, I put out with my partner Lauren. Um, we focus on making trades um, about a three day to three week lifespan. Um, we send out trade alerts as we personally make the trades, and you know we give a buy price, a stop price, and a target price. So anyone can just um, any of our subscribers can just put on the same trade and can then. You know, they can choose to watch the trade and follow along, uh, or they can just place it, place their sell orders and uh, forget it while they go on, you know, doing what they enjoy. Um, for those that are interested in trading more actively, we offer uh, all mentoring our daily chat, which is uh, it's like a live chat room uh, each day where uh, we sit there with, uh, with our subscribers and we talk about the markets and talk about different trade setups and, and analyze charts. And, uh, you know, they, they can really learn, really dig in deep into trading. Um, they, those, those are shorter time frame trades, um, using options for leverage. And, uh, yeah, so we just kind of just trade and we share and, uh, and I don't know, that's about it. The types of companies that you're investing in, is there a niche or a theme or is it just across the board? Uh, it's pretty much across the board. Um, we, we focus a lot I focus a lot on uh, the metals, um, gold and silver, trading through, but trading through ETFs, so it's pretty straightforward. Um, uh, that's, but we also trade, you know, just normal stocks. We trade uh, ETFs on uh, the financial sector, just just a little bit of everything. Back to the personal side, you write a lot and you publish a lot of, of uh, photos on your website called bumfuzzle.com. How do you? How do you feel when you get messages from complete strangers telling you that you've inspired them to do something completely different with their lives? Pretty great, yeah. And, I mean, every every time that pretty much makes our day. Um, yeah, I mean, we started blogging all those years ago, you know, well before blogging was uh, a big deal, you know. And it was uh, it was just a share, but it quickly grew, and we realized, oh, this is pretty fun to share and actually talk to people and, and have this impact. Um, and now, I mean, we just it, it, for me, it became such a habit. Just it was like a, what I enjoyed doing instead of instead of watching TV at night. I, I blogged and went through my pictures and uh, you know did that. And now it's just fantastic to have it all to look back through. And uh, all these years later, it's amazing to me that we're still just chugging along. Is there one message or from, from one 
one couple that that has reached out over the years that that you remember more than most or even like a moment over the last 15 years that you think about more often than others like you know what that moment defines the exact reason why we made that decision 15 years ago in Chicago to live this particular lifestyle um God, I don't know if there's one moment I mean for us like I said, every time we, we run into somebody and they, and they tell us that they've made a change in their lives, um, and that, you know, that they, that they see it as having been a good change, um, change for the better is it's exciting for us. It makes us feel good. And, you know, for us, when we started all this, we were, I mean, literally it was like over a pitcher of beer and a pizza and we came up with this idea. And by the next day we were acting on it and, uh, if it hadn't been for it, it just happened to be hurricane season. Otherwise, we probably would have it would have even happened quicker for us. We were just ready to do it. We were ready to make that change uh, overnight, and it was uh, exciting and fun. And we could have never foreseen, you know, what all that could have happened um, since then. Speak to the person listening right now that's like, man, this all sounds good, but, and they're inserting like 10 different excuses into the, into the reason why they couldn't do it. But you've proven that like anybody can do it. It, it doesn't matter whether you've got trading experience or you're a web designer. Now it's, it's easier than ever. Speak to the person listening in their cubicle right now thinking, man, that Pat's life sounds awesome. How do I do that? Where do I start? Like, how do I get started and moving in that direction? What do you tell that person? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, it, it's hard, you know? I mean, I was fortunate that I had managed to trade a bunch and, and do well, and I was in a business where I could just walk away and, and, and transfer it. Not everybody's in that. I understand that, you know? Um, but, you know, people can, they, they can actively work towards uh, finding a way to make themselves indispensable, you know, make themselves available, uh, make their jobs available, um, uh, remotely. And, but, but for really what I would f tell them to focus on is just to active, start actively managing their own expenses, uh, and, and downsizing their life now, you know, I mean, um, I never understood how people dream about, uh, living on a boat or living in a RV, these little tiny places, but yet they're currently living in a, you know, 3000 square foot home and, and paying for $200 for cable and all this, all, all these other things instead of moving towards that goal, you know, and start living that, that life now, but you know, in a different way and working towards it. That is perfect advice, and, and that is consistent throughout all of the people that I've talked to. The, the minimalism side of, of moving away from all of the stuff and the attic and the garage and the storage spaces full of, of, of stuff that they really don't need and start working towards, I mean, have a garage sale this Saturday, get rid of stuff, and, uh, and have another one next Saturday, and, you, and you're going to get closer and closer to, uh, to your goal. What are you focused on now and in the next six months? Uh, well, the next six months we've got, uh, we'll be cruising from, uh, from Florida this year. We're going to head West. Um, we'll go over, going to head to Mexico again. Uh, Mexico's kind of just become our home. That's where our kids were born. And we spent a lot of years there now and we just, we just love it. Um, so we're heading back to Mexico on the boat this, this year, and then we'll work our way down to Belize and Guatemala. And, uh, yeah, I'll just be continuing to do what I do to trade and, uh, work with my partner on the, on the newsletter every week and, and trade every day. And, um, I don't know, live remotely and cruise, enjoy life, enjoy my kids. Um, and that's about it. Man, that sounds like an incredible, incredible life. And you can follow it at bumfuzzle.com and check out the blog posts and the pictures. Pat, they are awesome. And also, and I'm going to have this in the, in the show notes, wandererfinancial.com, and I will have a, a link to the newsletter as well. So, Pat, I greatly appreciate your time today. Thank you for coming on the show. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Hey, I got one more thing. To, Let's do uh, it. Yeah, for your for your listeners, we got a we're offering a free sample newsletter and a and a coupon for a hundred dollars off an annual subscription. Uh, they can visit wandererfinancial.com backslash go hunt light. Nice. Yeah. So All right. Guys, and we'd really love to to have you join us. And thanks for having me on here. It was great. Awesome, Pat. Thank you for your time. 
don't forget to hit up the online printing rock stars at printdirtcheap.com and use promo code LIFEHUNTER for $10 off. Hey, Life Hunters, thank you for listening to this episode of Go Hunt Life. If you like the show and would like to support it, go to iTunes and do this. Subscribe to the show, leave a rating, and review it. It helps, and thank you. If you or someone that you know has quit their normal life to follow their dreams, I would love an introduction and maybe interview them on the show. You can find me at GoHuntLife.com and also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest at GoHuntLife. Until next time, stay weird, dare greatly, and ripcord out.